So George here. Uh, this is a Google Earth top view of the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And you'll see there on the, um, towards the bottom left, that's the Temple Mount. You can see the Dome of the Rock with its uh, golden uh, circle uh, dome there. And to the right of the Valley of Jehoshaphat is the Mount of Olives. Where currently, uh, it's actually, there's actually a, a, a Jewish cemetery over there. And it's uh, quite built up. The, um, there's a, va uh, a, a river called the Kidron River, which runs uh, in the middle of the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And uh, let's take a look now at uh, the view from ground level, where we can see the um, Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives. Okay, now here you see the Valley of Jehoshaphat, ground level view. Uh, there's a Temple Mount there on the right. And over there to the left, just above the trees, uh, uh, is the uh, Mount of Olives. Now let's go over there and see the view from there. Oh well, now here we are. Finally arrived at the Mount of Olives. Notice there's a Jewish cemetery uh, down on, on the slopes. And uh, over on the distance, just across from the Valley of Jehoshaphat, is the Temple Mount. And it is from this view that um, our Lord Jesus the Christ uh, gave the Olivet Discourse, where he described the events that were going to come to pass in the last days. And uh, it's interesting that as he made this, uh, uh, let's say, like a prophecy about the future, that the Valley of Jehoshaphat was just down there below. You know, we're talking about the temple, but we don't know that the Valley of Jehoshaphat was actually just between him and the temple. Because we have a lot to know about the Valley of Jehoshaphat from Joel. Joel is the uh, prophet who wrote the book of Joel in the Old Testament. And uh, let's, let's read from there, uh, from Joel chapter 3, from verse 12. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and the fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Oh, hello. Wow. Well, wow, that's powerful stuff. Now, um, the reason I was led to, to Joel, uh, chapter 3, is um, uh, I had actually spent... Uh, some some time in, in, in prayer um, over the last few days. We had this um, session in church. Uh, we were trying to find ways of getting more intimate with the Lord. And so, uh, so as I was doing those uh, things that the church uh, advised me to, um, I, you know, I had some questions. And uh, I had the five, there were five, I saw five was a nice number, so I asked the five questions. And question three and question five are related. Question three was, um, can I get a confirmation of what's really happening? Because it seems to be taking some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And the question five was, um, is there anything that you wanted me to share uh, with my, my audience on YouTube? Now, I don't usually uh, open the Bible at random. I'm just going to show you the, the Bible that I use. It's a pocket Bible. This is what I bring to church. Now, uh, I usually when I read the Bible, I, 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 I just read it from Genesis to Revelation, like, like a book. And even though I do that, and the Lord somehow finds ways of making the passage I'm reading at that time relevant, I don't know if he does that. But I suppose he knows everything in advance, so he sort of laid it all out, right? But um, so um, I'm not used to opening it random, but I did it this time. And what was odd that when I opened the Bible at random for questions three and five, which I just told you about, it opened into the, uh, the book of Joel, chapter three. Now this is just a, it's one page, but the odds of that happening is, you know, that's, that's, quite, that's kind of that's, that's very odd, very, that's very remote. Because I was really trying to be random. Of course, that's probably why. If it was just question three, question four, I probably just could have gotten it from the same page because I happened to be there already. My hands would have been there in that, that portion of the Bible. But no, it's, uh, you know, I've actually... So this is important. So it's an encouraging sign because the, what are the events that are being described are things that are short to come pass. And at least this is about seven years from now when uh, the, the Lord uh, Jesus the Christ will come back again, back. The way he, he ascended from the Mount of Olives, and he will descend from the Mount of Olives, and he will reign in, in Jerusalem, and in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, he will um, judge the nations. So uh, this is uh, looking. We look, definitely look forward to it. We hope very much from those of you watching that you are on the right side of that um, scenario. You don't want to be in the valley of Jehoshaphat being judged by Jesus the Christ. You want to be covered by his blood. Accept him as your Lord and Savior now. And you will, when the come, time comes, when the scene from the valley of Jehoshaphat takes place, you will not be facing him and facing his judgment, but you will be behind him. Behind him and, uh, you know, uh, secure and safe home where you belong, right? Okay, well, this is just the, the message. I hope it was encouraged to you, and uh, I'll see you again soon, right? Cheers, bye.